Okay, so let's find, find all homomorphisms Um, we'll call them phi from Z20 to Z to Z12. So like I said, this seems like kind of impossible at first, right? But if you take advantage of these two like structural tricks of, first of all, the group, the, so the domain, and then this result right here about this order business, it's actually not so bad. So what I wanna take advantage of about the domain is that we know that Z20 is a cyclic group, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like a prototypical cyclic group, and it's generated by one. Right? It's generated by one with addition, right? So one, one plus one, which is two, one plus one plus one, which is three, so on and so forth. So we know this is a cyclic group, which means um, any homomorphism, so, so any homomorphism uh, phi uh, is completely, completely determined by what it does to one, right? Yeah. And well, you might say, well, just real, real quickly, why is that? Because we should have an idea of why that's true. But check it out. We'll have, notice that phi of n is the same thing as phi of one plus one n times, right? But then that's phi of 1 plus phi of 1 n times. Or in other words, this is n phi of 1, where, yeah, that's like multiplication by n, but really it's repeated addition, just keeping uh, or taking advantage of the fact that we, even though we're in an additive group, we know that multiplication exists and we'll, we'll like carefully use it from time to time. So check it out. All we need to know is what phi of one does, right? And then, then we'll be good. And this is true for any cyclic group, right? We could have written like, uh, it's complete, if it's generated by G, then it's com completely, gen or the homomorphism is completely determined by what it does to G. And then it would just be G to the N here. And you would have phi of G all to the N power at the end, right? It's like essentially the same kind of thing. Okay, so that's what we know. And then uh, I guess now we want to use this like little numerical trick that we have over here. So in our case, phi of one has to divide, sorry, not phi of one, the order. So the order of phi of one has to divide the order of one in Z20, but what's the order of one in Z20? 20. 20, yeah, exactly, right. It's the generator uh, of a cyclic group of order 20, so it's 20, right? And then I guess like just arithmetically, if you add one to itself 20 times, you get 20, but that's zero, right? <clears throat> okay, but then what are the divisors of 20? Because this is telling us that the order of phi of 1 has to be a divisor, right? So the order of phi of 1 has to be a divisor of 20. So we got 1, Two. yeah, 4, Four. Five. 5, 10, 10. 20. 20. So there's those, right? Now, um, some of these are not possible, right? Because Check it out. What are the possible orders inside of Z12? Two, three, four, six. Yeah, and one. Yeah, so I guess like I, we could put it really succinctly like this. The order of phi of one has to be in the intersection of these two sets, right? This is divisors 
of 20. And then this are uh, divisors of 12. Divisors of 20, because that's coming from our domain. Divisors of 12, that's coming from our codomain, right? Like the image. So that leaves us with only a few possibilities, right? So the possibilities are going to be uh, what? 1, 2, and 4. That's it, right? Yeah. So those are the possible orders of phi of 1. But now we'll have to use this next trick. I mean, trick. It's like a fact that we proved before. And that is in uh, Zn, the order of m is equal to, does anyone remember this? Yeah, it's n divided by the GCD, GCD of m and n. Yeah. It's something like that, right? So uh, let's see. Uh, well, now let's break these down into cases, right? Um, well, I okay, guess so maybe, maybe before we do that, let's like look at our special case. So that means in Z12, which that's where we are, right? The order, order of n is going to be equal to, sorry, maybe m is going to be equal to 12 over the GCD, GCD of 12 and m, right? Yeah. I mean, 12 isn't that big, so like it, it's kind of easy to guess what the, the orders of these things are going to be, but you know, that's kind of neither here nor there. Okay, so now let's look at case number one. Let's say case number one is what happens if the order of phi of one equals one? Yeah, what does that mean phi of one is? No, you're thinking correctly though, like phi of one is the identity, but what's the identity in Z12? Zero. So phi of 1 is the identity, but that means that phi of n is equal to 0 for all n in z20, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so that's like uh, the trivial homomorphism, right? We say that something's the trivial homomorphism if it maps everything to the identity. And obviously, if the, you have a trivial homomorphism, then the kernel is everything. Um, the image is as little as possible, and the kernel is as big as possible. And then I guess case number two, we could say the order of uh, phi of 1 is equal to 2. Is that our next case? No. Now, now we're looking for an element of order 2 inside of Z12. Now we can play that game over there, right? where we do the order of whatever is 12 over the GCD of whatever. Or we can just kind of brain it and think about, well, what are the elements or single element um, in Z12 that has order 2? Six. six. And that's it, right? 6 plus 6 is zero. 12, which is 0. Yeah. So that means phi of 1 is 6. That's our only possibility here. 